tired of flying at a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour when you get in a car crash? Yeah! <laughs> it's the new state-of-the-art technology. The seatbelt prevents you from dying by allowing you to move with the car. Without the seatbelt in a car crash, this happens. We're on a trip to the park. We're with our driver, Faisal. We're having a great time. But oh no! It's a wall! Ah! The reason they fly forward is because they are moving at the same speed and velocity as the car. But just because the car stops moving, it doesn't mean they do! The seatbelt prevents the girls from continuously moving at their own velocity and stops the movement at their own acceleration. Both parts of the seatbelt are essential. Without the top part of the seatbelt, Brittany will fly forward. Essentially, she'll feel all the pressure in this area. Without the bottom part of the seatbelt, there's nothing holding Brittany down on the seat, so she will slide forward. Essentially, she will feel all the pressure in this area, and she will start to feel a burn. There are two kinds of seatbelts, the stretching and the non-stretching. The non-stretching seatbelt has a tag so that it is to stop you with the car, that your stopping distance is probably four or five times greater than if you had no seatbelt. A crash which stops the car and driver must take away its kinetic energy and the work energy principle that dictates that a longer stopping distance decreases the impact force. Stretching seatbelt. A moderate amount of stretch in a seatbelt harness can extend the stopping distance and reduce the average impact force on the driver compared to a non-stretching harness. Either a stretching or non-stretching seatbelt reduces the impact force compared to no seat. These concepts of momentum and impulse are merely an outgrowth of Newton's second law. The heavier the person is, the harder the seatbelt has to push back on them. Because high is a fatty and weighs a lot more than Brittany, then the seatbelt is going to take longer to push back on her when they crash. Not only does this relate to Newton's second law, but it relates also to Newton's first law. Newton's first law states that if something is moving at a constant velocity, it will continue unless something stops it like a force. How does this relate to momentum and impulse? Vroom vroom. The term momentum is a physics concept. An object with momentum is going to be hard to stop. To stop such an object, it's necessary to apply a force, e.g. car number two, against its motion for a given period of time. The more momentum which an object has, it's harder than it is to stop. Thus, it would require a greater amount of force for a longer amount of time to stop the car. Son. Hi, bodybuilder dad! So why do we wear seat belts? So when we get in a car crash, we don't hit the dashboard and die. Go seat belts! Go seat belts! <laughs> yeah, dude. So remember guys, always wear your seat belt. And also remember Newton's first law, Newton's second law, impulse and momentum, velocity, and force of impact all relate to your seat belt in your car. Be safe! Go. Hey kid, wanna come in for a ride?